you have been diagnosed with a kidney stone. There are several different treatment options for a kidney stone, including non-surgical and surgical treatments. Your doctor will work with you to choose the best option. You should consider the benefits and risks that matter most when making your decision. Observation is a non-surgical approach in which we allow the stone to pass on its own. The smaller the stone, the better the chance that it will pass. The benefit of observation is that you avoid having surgery. The risks of observation are that the stone could grow or move, or it could cause a blockage, which may be painful and on rare occasions could lead to kidney damage. The chance that the stone will grow or move is 70% over four years. If the kidney stone passes without treatment, you may have a certain amount of pain and discomfort. This can be reduced with medication. You may also have nausea, vomiting, and have blood in your urine. If you are currently symptom-free, the chance of developing symptoms is 1 in 10, or about 10% per year. If the kidney stone does not pass and symptoms develop or worsen, your doctor will recommend surgery. The surgical options for the treatment of kidney stones are shockwave lithotripsy, ureteroscopy, and percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Your doctor will discuss these options with you. Shockwave lithotripsy is a surgical procedure in which high energy shock waves are transmitted through water and directed at the kidney to break the stone into smaller pieces. This makes it easier to pass them through the urinary tract. Shockwave lithotripsy is an outpatient surgery and you'll go home the same day. For this procedure, you'll have general anesthesia, which means you will be asleep during the surgery. If you are on blood thinners, you must be able to stop taking them before this procedure. After the procedure, you may have discomfort, flank pain, bruising, nausea and vomiting, and blood in your urine. You may also pass stone fragments for several weeks. The benefits of shockwave lithotripsy are that there is no incision and the risk is low. The success rate of this therapy depends on several factors, including the size and hardness of the stone and the patient's body type. Your doctor can provide you with your likelihood of success with this treatment. These are the risks of shockwave lithotripsy. You may need a second procedure, such as a reteroscopy, in order to clear all the stones. There is a 1 in 1,000, or 0.1% risk of serious bleeding. If this happens, you would need a blood transfusion. There is a 1 in 100, or 1% risk, that you will need a second procedure, such as a stent or ureteroscopy. There is a 1 in 100, or 1% risk, that after the procedure, you will have severe pain that would require immediate medical attention. And there is a small risk that you will get sepsis, which is a serious infection. You can usually return to your normal activities two days after a shockwave lithotripsy procedure. Ureteroscopy is a surgical procedure in which a small instrument called a ureteroscope is inserted into the urethra, through the bladder, and into the ureter, the tube that connects the kidney to the bladder. The kidney stone is then broken up with a laser fiber into dust-sized particles which will pass through the urinary tract or into small pieces which are removed with a basket. Ureteroscopy is an outpatient surgery and you will go home the same day. For this procedure, you'll have general anesthesia, which means you will be asleep during the surgery. This procedure usually requires a stent. A stent is a soft, hollow tube about 10 to 12 inches long and made of a flexible plastic material. The stent is placed in the ureter to hold it open. The stent is usually removed within one week after the ureteroscopy with a brief in-office procedure. For many patients, a stent can cause irritation of the bladder and ureter which can cause these symptoms. Cramping, discomfort and back pain when you urinate, blood in the urine, frequent urination, urinary urgency, and bladder pain. These symptoms can be managed with medication. The benefit of ureteroscopy is that there is no incision, and it can be used to treat kidney stones that won't break with shockwave lithotripsy. The success rate of this therapy depends on several factors, including the size and hardness of the stone, 
and the patient's body type. Your doctor can provide you with your likelihood of success with this treatment. These are the risks of ureteroscopy. You may need a second procedure in order to remove all of the stones. There is a 1 in 1,000 or 0.1% risk of injury to the ureter that may require surgery to repair. There is a 1 in 100 or 1% risk of a minor injury that may require a stent for two to three weeks. And there is a small risk of sepsis, which is a serious infection. You can usually return to your normal activities one to two weeks after a ureteroscopy. A percutaneous nephrolithotomy is a surgical procedure. The surgeon makes a small incision about the size of a dime in your back and inserts a tube directly into your kidney. This allows us to break up and remove the stones. This procedure requires an overnight observation and most patients will go home the next day. For this procedure, you will have general anesthesia, which means you will be asleep during the surgery. If you are on blood thinners, you must be able to stop taking them before this procedure. This procedure usually requires a stent. A stent is a soft, hollow tube about 10 to 12 inches long and made of a flexible plastic material. The stent is placed in the ureter to hold it open. The stent is usually removed within one week after the nephrolithotomy during a brief in-office procedure. For many patients, a stent can cause irritation of the bladder and ureter, which can cause these symptoms. Cramping, discomfort and back pain when you urinate, blood in the urine, frequent urination, urinary urgency, and bladder pain. These symptoms can be managed with medication. The benefit of percutaneous nephrolithotomy is it has the highest success rate for kidney stone removal and can clear most kidney stones with one procedure. These are the risks of percutaneous nephrolithotomy. There are higher risks with a percutaneous nephrolithotomy than with any other procedures. There is a 1 in 100 or 1% risk of serious bleeding for which you would need a blood transfusion. There is a 1 in 100 or 1% risk of fluid buildup around the lungs. If that happens, we would need to insert a needle or tube to drain the fluid. And there is a small risk of sepsis, which is a serious infection. You can usually return to your normal activities one to two weeks after a percutaneous nephrolithotomy. If you have any questions about kidney stone treatment options, please ask your caregivers. And thank you for choosing Cleveland Clinic for your care.